Today's encounter is going to be conducted uh, by Yogesh Barve. He's a conceptual artist whose conceptual practice ranges from painting and printing to sculpture film, multimedia installations, and site-specific works. A common thread throughout his work is critique of our culture. He uses the idea of the slash in the form of unlearning, deconstructing, and non-conformism as thinking and working methods. It's a great privilege for us to have you here today. We'd like to extend a very warm welcome. In India and also abroad. Um, so this one, it's called uh, Revolution. And it was in the show uh, in the gallery called Kemul in last year. And the name of the show was called Bunting, uh, which was looking at the idea of uh, why do we celebrate? And is there any need to celebrate uh, things? So I came up with this object. Uh, it's an eye checking fit. And then, um, I found some archive uh, which were in my interest. So on the left here, it's a still from a film called uh, Anshya Nadalao by Dali, uh, where um, there's a scene of a uh, man cutting, a, cutting an eye. And then uh, on right this, it's a limb of a rat. So in 3D technology, now people can really uh, print uh, ligament and same with the eye and this is 1984 by George Orwell and there's a statement I did uh, I want you to make uh, blind which was looking at the idea of uh, we do have eyes but do we really see things so I uh, painted all the lenses in black color and then there's a syringe also here somewhere where, which has the black ink to inject people so that's one work and this is the second work which was in the same exhibition and i was looking at the idea of the technology 3d printing so i got to uh, so got, i got uh, invitation in paris google cultural institute so i was the residence for four months uh, and they had a 3d technology uh, like the printing technology so i made some objects using this technology so the one is, and all the objects I didn't uh, create in a computer by using any software. I just downloaded it from online. So one is like, it's a gla like the glass, but there's no uh, shade inside. So what one has to do is to just wear this glass and it will be like, oh, now you will see art. But what happens is like, you are just seeing uh, what's already there. And then the other is this one. It's the Marshall, Marshall Duchamp's uh, fountain. And I was looking at the idea of Dadaism. Because in Dada, uh, he uses the uh, ready-made objects. And then, but after using, like, like for now, Dadaism is now going into pop art. Because many of the other artists, they use uh, found objects. But it's, it's not the, that was not the idea of uh, Dadaism. So I did a Dadaism's fountain with the uh, Andy Orwell's uh, dollars. And this is the maker board. Uh, so when you print, so there's a default print of uh, this object by which uh, it's like you're testing your printer. So I, uh, so it was already there in the Google. So I just took this object and then I cut it into half. And that's the image of uh, Make a board. This one, uh, it's the uh, rad bones. Uh, and I painted them in silver. Because I was looking at the, uh, I was in Indonesia for a, a study of uh, a visual culture section. And then I found, uh, in Jakarta there's one amazing museum. So I went to museum and I found the ornaments uh, which were there are made out of uh, bones, then nails, hair, or teeth. But there was no such thing as gold or uh, diamonds. So I was looking in the context of India, because many of the people are really greedy about the ornaments and jewelry. So that's why I painted this into uh, silver. Because I didn't have a golden paint to paint, so I just painted it into silver paint. And that's why the display is on the red velvet, because we see in jewelry, shop it presented like this and also uh, before fine art i studied uh, 
leather technology from Bandra Polytechnic for three years, uh, where I studied how to uh, process a leather from a raw skin. So the idea of beauty and the ugliness was really dead for me because I was really working with the raw skin. And so later it came into my work, like using with the actual bones or skin. This one is called Is Left, Is Right, Is Continue. It was a show in uh, Scotland, Glasgow. And then show was looking at the idea of uh, the left wing and the right wing. Because it happened in 2014, where Scotland wanted to have their own freedom, uh, their own country. So I did this piece, and it's a, so this one is a text, and it's had, it had been like stretched in the Photoshop, and the text is, is left, is right, is left, is right, is left, is right. And there are 66 windows. But what happens, once you, uh, and like once you go for like further to see the work, to see the lines, uh, as you will see up, it, like you will you'll get to know what the text is. So at first glance, there are only lines, but as you approach the work, you can read the text, what's in, what's in there. This one, it's called, the machines are the only rational. It's also uh, in, the, in the same uh, Glasgow show, and there's, it's only two like uh, ready-made objects, and they are just hitting each other. So I was looking at the idea of machines and why human wants to call them self as a rational, because we are really not rational people. This one, it's called Information on Information, and this was presented in uh, Dubai Art Fair 2014. Uh, so I had like the two printers, like all in one printer scanner copier. One was dead and one was working. So I broke the uh, dead one. Then I scan all the parts from the of the dead printer from the uh, the working printer, and I got to like I got 300 images and I made a work out of it. So the idea was I was really keen to know how information works. Uh, so I like the object printer, scanner, copier because the information we get is from books and it also connects to the idea of this object printer, scanner, copier. That's how we scan first, then we print, then we make copies, just like the information. <coughs> this one, it's called a uh, Ruby Cube Object Practice, Practical PSP Game and Virtual. Uh, this was done in college. Uh, and it's a really, it's, it's like half an hour video where I'm just uh, working with the, I'm trying to play with the Rubik Cube, but in the end I ended up doing, like I removed all the stickers from the Rubik Cube and now I can play from, like in one move I can win. And it was looking at the idea of uh, object and the idea of game. Because in the making, in the process of, uh, like the, in the production of also Rupee Cube, it's all, first it's black, then they add stickers, then we, then we buy the uh, game, the Rupee Cube, and for some reason we started playing with it. So I was really questioning the idea of uh, game. This one, it's called Just and Gone, Slash. This one was at Delhi, uh, there was a show called uh, uh, Insert by Dux Media Collective, and then they invited us to uh, make an exhibition there. So I did a uh, painting on a facade of the architecture, and it's the architecture. It's called uh, Matigar, and it was supposed to it was supposed to demolished after one exhibition by Shakuntala, and it, the exhibition was looking at the idea of time and space, but after exhibition. The architecture is like the building is still there, so I was looking. Like, so I was interested into camouflaging the architecture into the surrounding nature. So I, so I like design the uh, design the stencils from the leaves from the uh, from the site, and then I did started uh, graffiti on the wall, and the result was this. This one, it's a 
permanent installation in uh, Clark House. Clark House is a space in South Bombay. It's a it's not an art gallery. It's a artist initiated space where there are two curators and now we have almost 40 artists from JJ School of Art, uh, my friends from Basel, and then there are other groups which are from abroad. So in the renovation process, uh, curators asked me to do something with the windows. So I came up with the idea of uh, installing window in a such a way that it will talk about the equality and inequality of the space. And we call this uh, work as a, the work is called Portraits of the Sea Day because uh, we call, <coughs> so this is the Clarko space and the this part we call lower deck and this one as the upper deck, uh, as a ship. Because we were having a conversation uh, Kimi Basin. Kimi Basin is an is a artist from Paris and he's from Senegal, Dakar. So he was talking about the idea of slavery and into ships. And when he saw this space, he he like he suggested maybe you should call this uh, you should give this title because it feels like a ship. This one, it's my first public project I did uh, at Wasse. Uh and it's called Salt and Equal. Uh, so when you get down to Vasai Station to reach this art college, you have to walk like one uh, like one kilometer, and there's no such activity when you walk because it's, there's only salt pans on your left and on your right you have a railway wall. So I did this uh, illusion, uh, illusion like uh, it's a Xerox copy, and what happens once you walk? You can, like you, it's, the idea was to make it into a fun walk rather than just walking. So I ended up doing this. This one, it's called Silent Text. And it was installed on the Republic Day of India, uh, 26 January uh, 2013. And then the work was looking at the idea of uh, the Constitution of India, and I ended up doing this. It's a so I found this <coughs> textbook, and there are this uh, lines on this textbook. So I made the stripes, and each uh, line from the page is connected to the other line. But when the fan turns on, all the lines get dismantled. So I was looking at the idea of <coughs> the Constitution. Also, now it it works like this. It's there. Everything is there in the constitution, but nobody's like nobody's like really approaching to the constitution. This one it's called Innocenceness, and it's a work by my dog. His name is Singa. And then why Innocenceness is because he don't have the value of a currency, so he broke the currency. Then the value of a toy and also his own food. This one is called perspective <coughs> and object. So I usually uh, uh, watch videos by philosophers. So there's one philosopher called KG Krishnamurti, and then he talked about, about the idea of perspective. What we see is not 3D actually. What we see is actually 2D because we perceive everything around in our eye by only it's a it's a 2D image. It's not a 3D. It's the illusion of the 3D of the perspective. So that's why I ended up making uh, three objects. One is really solid, one is like hollow, and one is transparent. And then I just added one cone to talk about one point perspective. This one is called uh, dismantled. So the small image here is the archive when I did the work. But after dismantling, now I cannot make the same image as this archive. And it was in the Kadisa Foundation, uh, Paris.
video was exhibited like uh, in my first group show in Clark House and the video uh, so I took my Nokia 2 megapixel camera phone I uh, hang with the string of a rubber and I just spin this mobile so that's how I got the footage and I was talking and the video uh, it presented also in the same mobile phone in a Clark House pillar so the idea was you know installing this video in such a manner that it will talk about the architecture or the gallery itself. This one, it's called Global Question Mark. Uh, so there's this, uh, there's this annual event in my uh, village in Jezuri. And it's the Maybe I'll show you the video first. It's a simple video work without anything, like without any exoticism or exoticization of the video. So it was only a single channel video and there was a text about the work and the link. To, if you really want to uh, experience the video, it's better to go on this side. So the link will take you to the GPS map of uh, and then JZU. This one is called Visual Vexation. And uh, I got an invitation to work in the Minneapolis uh, museum at US, but then for some reason it didn't like they didn't like the work I guess. But then what I did here I was looking at so visual vexation actually is, uh, it's a composition by Eric Satie he was a composer, and by this single composition one can make 841 uh, music 
notations. So uh, John Cage. Uh, so John Cage is a group of fluxes and then uh, he started a performance piece, live piece in Minneapolis, where uh, many musicians used to come and then they used to perform for two to three days continuous by using single composition. So it was all about the sound. So I ended up making something visual. So I was looking at the idea of doodle and then idea of sound. Because when John Cage talks about the sound, he talks about uh, he talks about traffic jam, uh, the sound from the traffic jam, or kitchen, like the work we do in kitchen. So I ended up making I ended up doing like uh, 841 uh, doodles. This one, uh, it's called explaining this work would be exploiting. Uh, so I don't explain this work. This one, it's called 360 Hero because I'm looking at the idea, the product of GoPro 360 video. By like, using six cameras, you can really create a sphere of a video which can be used in a virtual reality. So I ended up making, uh, it's the hand of uh, MC Asher. MC Asher is the printmaker, graphic designer. And then instead of, so he is actually making a self-portrait by uh, using a steel ball. So and I just changed the uh, steel ball into a real object steel ball. So it's a live sculpture. This one, it's called Chop Nation. So I found a flag of India, which was really torn up. And I scanned this flag from both the sides. And then I divided one image into 2020, uh, some small images. So it's the, it's the, it's a work about nationalism. But I don't like the idea of nation as such. So I ended up uh, dividing the image of Indian flag. This one, it's called Under the Microbes in, in Reality. Is the So I took the map of India. I was going to Papua for work, and it was a final match at 1K Day. So I found this flag sellers at the station. So I just bought the flag and I like removed all the strain from the flag, and I did a brutal sculpture out of it. And it was part of the Dakar Biennale this year at Senegal, that one. This one, it's called Checkmate. It's a really, it's really small work. Of five, it's a 5 mm steel wall. And then it was hanging in the center of the gallery. It was shown in Bangalore. And I was looking at the idea of production of an artist like Anish Kapoor, who really makes really big sculptures. But the idea of I don't get the idea of the scale why he's making such a big sculpture. Because like, you can find really like the same things in really small sculpture. So I ended up making a 5 mm steel ball in the gallery. This one it's called Creator's Mouth. And as you know, it's the uh, it's the map of the uh, Varnas, four Varnas in the Vedas. So the Brahmin comes from the mouth and stuff. But Dalit community is there's no such uh, mention where they come from. I come from a Dalit family, Dalit community. So I had a privilege to you know to I can camouflage into anyone. So I found these archive in the flea market of Paris, Pop the Bomb, and I ended up like taking my photograph in the same pose as a Red Indian, as the Roman guy. And I did a composition out of it. It's a, it's a really small uh, A4 or A3 size of work. And this one is my, uh, it's a painting from my college. This one, uh, so there's a collective called Samut uh, from Delhi. And then they also work uh, in 
Bombay, then Bangalore, and I ended up making this posters because we had a uh, we had a collective call because it was I don't remember actually, but there was a uh, in Bandra there was a festival and they asked to make a poster, so I ended up making this. It says, "Ha ha, the fear of the fear of being murdered or going to jail made me this work." Like this, because if you make a political work, you can really get killed by the rules. So I don't want that. This one, it's the recent work. Uh, we got invitation in uh, Villa Vasilier. It's a new space in Paris, which is looking at the history of Indian art. Because uh, many of the progressive artists actually went to uh, Montparnasse, Paris, and they had their best time in Paris, like uh, talking with other artists, like Krishna Reddy, then M. F. Hussain, Raza, Suja, and Tayyab Mehta. So there was one artist called Judy Reddy. She is a Judy Bloom. She is the wife of Krishna Reddy, and she had amazing stories of Indian artists, which we don't know really by the time. So she, we, like she made a uh, work out of it, and she know all the stories from. Of Indian artists by this time, from 60s and 70s. So I was, uh, I did this work by by taking the idea of Orientalism by Edward Said and how Indians were uh, like shown now in India itself. This one is a video. Work. It's a four hours video. Work. This one, it's called a political symbol, which is it's made out. It's made by the same process of making sickles. Uh, it's the sign of the symbol for the Communist Party India. And we didn't make the sickles as such, but we, me and my friend Sumesh, we ended up making a non-political symbols. <coughs> and we have started a new space in Ayodhya. Uh, it's called Akhara Bhavan, where we uh, produced a body of work by you know working with the uh, community around. So it, this prints are uh, from a political. So there are these painters who like prints uh, political posters for the election. So I ended up making this. It's a copy. And it says copy, copy, copy in small. Colors, there are really funny names. 
So I erase all the names and then I scan them in a scanner and then I did a print out of it in a black and white and it was installed uh, right next to a corner in Clubhouse. So what happens when you see upstairs, it's a colorful pages but then the, on the other hand we have a black and white spectrum of the same color shade. So I was like encountering the idea of the value of the color because was looking at the, because uh, once you turn color into black and white, it comes to the question of value instead of the aesthetic of the color. This one, Munir, it's a project I did in Indonesia in Bangkok <coughs> University. And then Munir is the, uh, Munir was a scholar from Indonesia who went to study UK, uh, like to study law. And on the way back, uh, he got murdered in the plane. But for, like, for, there was a poison in his food. And till now, nobody knows why people killed money. So I made a project called Hoax Question Mark. And then there were images like Munir's and then many other political figure. And also the politics within the uh, institution, Telkom University. So it's a project of, and I was looking at the designer Kelly Gaston, he's a German designer uh, and there's an amazing book called Design and Archive. So I was referring that to make this project. <coughs> this one is a project called Ibra. It's an online magazine. So I did so I ended up making uh, nine videos on this website. This one especially this one it's called Chal Mere Bhai. So I met a Afghani friend in Indonesia, and then here he is reenacting. Uh, so this is the guy, uh, Ahmed Fawad, and then he made a remake of Chal Mere Bhai from this movie. And then this one is shot in Afghanistan. This one is in some studio Bombay. So the idea of the Bollywood in Afghanistan is really different because he told me that when he was really he like when he was kids, there was no uh, like one cannot watch movies. But then now because of the uh, information he have, he can really produce films. Room and I, so my father works in a railway as a uh, guard in Western Railway and whenever I have chance to meet him, I travel with him in railway. So I ended up making this video. It's the Bombay City in uh, 360 view. Angela Merkel 
and it's called mother plus monster equals to monster. So there's this setup by, um, it's a great work by Namjoon Pai, where there's a same setup where he uses CCTV camera, television and Buddha. But the CCTV camera is capturing Buddha and then showing the same image of Buddha in the television. So I made the same work without like adding anything, but only the, I, I just changed the title uh, saying Buddha is smiling because that's the, uh, that was the password for the nuclear test in India. And as you will go to upward there, it was this installation. So this project, it's called uh, Museum Box. So in uh, Google Cultural Institute, uh, while I was there for four months, uh, so Google has a website also, the Google Cultural Institute. And on this website, they have uh, three sections, historic moments, graffiti, and something other, yeah. So I like the idea of historic moments. So if you visit this website, there are millions of archives. But what happens, you, one cannot download single image from the, uh, from the archive. So I ended up uh, stealing 6.5 billion images, videos, text, audio from the website. And the idea, was to, or idea of you know, stealing the archive was to, because in India there are only 18% people who use this internet, and the rest of 82% don't have internet. Still we are on the third number in using internet. So I really want to, you know, take this archive. It's in a, it's a video format. Now I have 500 videos of this archive. And the idea is to take these videos in uh, public spaces and just project them so people can, like the bystanders will just see the archive was there and access the archive because it's for public. So Google, I had a meeting with Google say, so they were really pissed with the project because it's a violation of copyright law. Then I met uh, Lawrence Lee and then he said, no, you should project this in a public space. Don't worry about it. So yeah, this is the project. It's called Museum Box. And this is the archive I found in Chor Bazaar. It's called Memories for 200 Rupees. So I was looking at the archive which Google has uh, done a project out of it and then we got this personal archive lying in uh, Chor Bazaar selling at 200, 500 Rupees. Yeah, this is the last work and that's the name of the show also and also the title of the work. Why explaining could be exploiting is the... So I took this books, uh, kids books, story books and then I hear all the stories to imagine new stories. But then as I explain the work, one get the idea of work and that's how exploitation is for me. Uh, 
great conceptual artist from 60s where he says the world is full of the world is made full of really interesting objects i do not wish to add more so the idea is to use archive from the history and then reanimate them in a way that it will be new things for the